I'm getting a $70,000 wolf masculinization. Justin already has the face that 95% of other men wish they had already. I do get addicted to that attention. Guys, quick question. Do any of you have a friend that you see on social media that's been taking a few too many trips to Europe over the last few weeks? And it's really got you wondering, where are you getting all of this money? Well, today, we explore a similar situation. Now, if you've been a regular of the internet for a while now, I'm sure you're at least somewhat familiar with who we're going to be talking about today. If not, allow me to introduce you to the quote, human Kindle. Now, the human Kindle Kendall is this like internet micro celebrity who's been I guess famous over the last few years just for having so much plastic surgery. That's his claim to fame. And it's been a few years since we heard anything about him but recently our favorite channel on YouTube did a special on him. Human Kendall, I want to look like a wolf. I, uh, I don't really know what that means but I guess we're gonna find out today. Now real quick before we begin I just want to remind you guys that I do have an Instagram and a Twitter and like you did say you were gonna follow me on them. I'm um, not going to be one to hold it over your head or anything. You're not going to be that kind of guy, but I just uh, just thought you could use a reminder. With that being said, however, and with you doing your part, I'm sure, let's begin. Please subscribe. Hi, I'm Justin Jedlicka. I'm 42 years old and I live in West Hollywood, California. I spent over a million dollars on over a thousand cosmetic procedures. My next procedure is going to be my most innovative and biggest one yet. I'm getting a $70,000 wolf masculinization. $70,000 wolf masculinization. Skinalization. That sounds like the most expensive fursuit I've ever heard of. What does that even mean? Why would you want to look like a wolf? We're, we're people. I don't think a human would necessarily look masculine if they look like a wolf. I, I think they look like a dog. The wolf masculinization procedure I'm planning on having, it's going to be a deep plane neck lift, a deep plane facelift, a mid-face suspension and temporal suspension. I'll have my upper lids done and I'll have a canthopexy, which is like the cat eye procedure. But I think with all of that, in tandem with Dr. Eppley cinching in the sides of my face here, like that, it's gonna give more of like a wolf look. Uh, I've got to be honest, I'm not really getting a whole lot of wolf from this. I'm more getting like a street fighter character, if I'm being truthful. I mean, I guess it does look slightly more masculine, but it also does look slightly less human, which I feel like should be something to consider before going into this procedure. Well, I mean, I guess not if you want to look like a wolf, but still. There's a certain point, and it's a point that's a lot sooner than most people who get plastic surgery think it is, where you enter the uncanny valley. And uh, we passed that line a long time ago here. So today I have my consultation with Dr. Eppoli to talk to him about the procedures that I want to have. It's gonna be a really big change, like a all new Justin, a totally new human Kendall. I'm super excited by the next set of surgeries that we've been talking about now for, what, a year, right? Justin already has the face that 95% of other men wish they had already. Oh, Dr. Epley, don't you have like a code of ethics or something you have to follow? Look, Justin, I'm not here to say that I don't like the way your face looks. You do you, I do me. But if we're going to make statements like this, I'm going to have to say that no, uh, I really prefer my face. I don't know how much they paid this doctor to say that, but uh, was it really worth you not appearing trustworthy as a doctor anymore? I really do believe, however, that a lot of people who go overboard with the plastic surgery really think that everybody wants to look like them because they just can't imagine Imagine not looking like that anymore. <laughs> so if that's your starting point, uh, you know, you know you're gonna have a, a winner. Implants, they'll do things that are not humanly possible, but your biggest risk is infection. I know it's a lot of procedures. How many hours of surgery are we actually looking at? It's more about when can I go out in public and not have to do a lot of explaining to people. Now you're a little different. <laughs> I'll can't. wear mine as like a badge of honor. Is there not like a point with implants where you just start to run out of space? I mean, this guy said he had like, what, over 70? That could be a completely made up number, but I think that's what he said. How do you have any space left in your face to get like seven more things done? I mean, what do you do when you fill up every square inch of your body with plastic? What happens next? Having pec implants, bicep implants, tricep implants, 
made me feel a little bit more like I was stepping into an ownership of my masculinity. I enjoyed plastic surgery because to me, it was kind of being rebellious against society, against what everybody told me I was supposed to look like and was never gonna look like. It gave me this sense of confidence saying, you know what, if you're not gonna accept me for who I am, I'm gonna show you how different I am and it's gonna be 120% and I'm gonna slam it in your face. All right, so as many of you might already know, I've been in LA for like the last 10 or 12 days at this point and uh, I don't I don't understand this take whatsoever. There's nothing on the planet I think that gives you less individuality than plastic surgery because being in Hollywood and the Beverly Hills I've seen a lot of it and uh, well everybody who has it looks the exact same. Everybody gets the same things done, everybody gets the same modifications done and after three or four procedures well you look like every other person that's had the procedures done. If this guy was walking down Rodeo I would not think wow that guy spent a million dollars on plastic surgery he's really going against society I'd think wow he, he fits in here. There's nothing that makes you look less unique than plastic surgery. It's why plastic surgery has that distinguishable look. So I just got off the phone with a plastic surgeon of mine, Dr. Barry Epley, the doctor who did my leg implants. So I've been considering for a long time doing something that I think I'm calling wolf masculinization That's on my face. Sexy. You're not getting like, like a beard or something implanted? No! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna turn hairy. You're gonna be like the AI version of yourself. <gasps> I hope so. I would live, that would be so fierce. So I know I already kind of have big cheek bones, but I feel like this is gonna help thin you this have out. Great bone structure yeah. to start with. So, so is it gonna be too much then? No. no, I don't think there's anything such as too much. Cheers to- You know, it's times like these, I really wish I had a big red buzzer to smack. Because no, that's uh, that's not true. There is definitely such a thing as too much, especially when it comes to plastic surgery. I don't really get people's obsession with not wanting to look like they've aged at all, because I mean, you either look like you've aged a little bit, which is a normal human thing, or you look like you've gotten tons of plastic surgery. I mean, I don't know who these people think they're fooling. Sure, good plastic surgery, you won't notice, but doing stuff like this, going over the top like this, sure, you don't look like you've aged, but you also don't really look like you can age. I mean, you almost look like a wax figure at some point, and it's like, why would you want to look like that? It's not like anybody's looking at you like, oh my god, how is this person not aged at all? They're like, wow, that's a lot of plastic. It's not fooling anybody. God. <laughs> more is more. So are you ever concerned about the surgeries or anything? Oh gosh, Walter, so serious. Body modification's been a passion of mine forever. Like, if I was to die, <laughs> I'd be dying doing something I loved. And I think that the risks that I take are monitored. I hear you know, from my mom and from my friends sometimes that they feel like a little concerned, like what if it doesn't come out the way you like? And I just think, well, I could fix it again. Can I ask you this, would you ever stop? No, uh, like to me, it's my artistry. It's it's creativity. Like you wouldn't ask an artist, a painter to put down their paintbrush and be like, oh, we already saw you paint that once. Like they're gonna continue to reinvent and change. I mean, I sort of understand this mindset to a point, but also it's like most painters aren't painting with things that are actively destroying their body. I mean, a lot of plastic surgery can have serious long-term side effects. So I mean, sure, if this is how you express yourself, go for it. I don't really have a problem with it. But from things I've seen and read, I think a lot of the times there's this image that people who get a lot of plastic surgery are chasing that is unreachable because they'll always find something else they want to change. So I mean, sure, if you could really say that this is just some sort of self expression that's completely harmless and that it's just art go for it but i really really have a hard time believing that's all it is there's no end goal with my plastic surgery i'll continue to be an artist and rethink and redefine what beauty means for me it's harder and harder for me to find things that are different to do and i have to continually up the ante in my own mind to be able to do television and to stay relevant i have to have more surgery and i continually have it because i do get addicted to that attention i mean at least he's aware of it right i mean i guess you can't ask for a whole a lot more than that. If a person's aware of their addiction and they don't want to stop it, I mean, I don't really think it's anybody's job to step in. I've had this stance for quite some time at this point. I think most things that are illegal should be legal. This doesn't really tie into plastic surgery, but just kind of addiction in general. Like, I mean, if I want to do crack, I, I should be able to do crack. It's my body, right? Maybe keeping some laws like where you can't sell crack to children. But I mean, other than that, why, why can't I do crack? I don't want to do crack, but you get my point. If somebody's addicted to something and they realize the risks and they want to do it anyways, I mean, your hands are kind of tied. I mean, obviously it's different if you have kids or a family, but this guy's kind of out here on his own. And if he wants to do these risky surgeries and he's okay with it, I mean, who's to stop him, right? So the rest of this video is just some skin tightening thing where he gets this cream rubbed on his face. Kind of disappointed, not gonna lie. Thought we were gonna see him turn into a wolf, but I guess that's for another day. 
time. But that's really the entire video. Well, what do you guys think? What are your thoughts on this kind of plastic surgery? Do you think that doctors should start refusing it at some point because of the risks? Or do you think as long as the patient's okay, it's okay to do it? What are your personal thoughts on plastic surgery? Me personally, like, I don't care what you do. Like I said, it's your body. I really don't care what you do with it. Me personally, I don't think I'll ever get plastic surgery. Not really something I have any interest in. I quite like the way my face looks. But hey, I think if you want to spend a million dollars to look like an action figure, nobody should stop you. Godspeed. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button and touch it. It's free. It won't cost you anything. But for now, that's all I have for you today. Bye. Subscribe.